One of the most important things that you're going to learn in 3D is how to move and rotate and scale your objects, otherwise known as translating them. Now, we've got the scene that uh, we've looked at before here. It's the, the wall and just a, a very, very simple backdrop. And I've created sort of several teapots in here. And what I've done with some of them is I've rotated them and I've scaled them and I've also moved them around. But the question is, how did I actually do this? Well, let's start by selecting this main teapot here, and let's move our viewport around, and I'm using my Alt and Middle Mouse key to do this, and then just my Middle Mouse wheel to pan. And I'm not necessarily going to go into my Modify panel here, because as you can see, this has actually been turned into an editable polygon. So it's no longer a parametric primitive. And in actual fact, we're going to deal with how you do that a little bit later on in the uh, this training kit. But what I want to do is I want to change the position or the rotation or indeed the scale of this object. Well, let's start with its position, shall we? And I'll do that by coming up to here, which is the Select and Move icon. And I'll just click that. And what you can see here now is we've got this thing come up, and this is called a gizmo. And you can see as I mouse over my move icon over various parts of it, bits of it highlight and bits of it stop highlighting and so on and so forth. So let's just have a little bit of a, a sort of a view of what these do. If I move myself around here so we can get a better view, you can see that these axes actually match, or mirror, whichever way you want to look at it, the axes down here in the bottom left-hand corner. And that's because this object was created in the perspective view. So therefore, it's coordinates match the world coordinates plus although we've got them set to view there I could set the, my um, reference coordinate system to world and then they would definitely match what's going on here in the world what I've got with these gizmos here is a means by which I can move either in an X direction a Y direction or a Z direction and you'll notice whenever I highlight over each one of these they turn yellow. Their normal color would be red for X, green for Y, and blue for Z. And obviously as I highlight over each one, that neutral yellow becomes the I'm selected mode. With each one of these gizmos, I can left click, hold, and drag. There we go, and let's just move away here. I appear to have got one of these linked to it. So let's just unlink. Let's come back here. There we go, that's better. So there you go, I can move just by left clicking and dragging in Y. I can move by left clicking and dragging in X. And I can move by left highlighting, left clicking and dragging in Z as well. And you can see there from my real time shadow, exactly what, there we go, it disappears off through the floor. exactly where I am and how far away I am from the ground. Now you might have noticed that as well as the single gizmo that we've got here, we've also got these handles. And what we get with these handles, again let's pull ourselves into a better position, what we get with these handles is if I left click on that, is I've highlighted both X and Y at the same time. So that means that I can move in X and Y, but without moving in Z. So if this teapot was locked down onto this floor, it would mean that I would be able to very, very easily just move around without actually causing myself any problems. So I can just reposition. And I'll take that and I'll move that around here. And maybe what I'm going to do, sorry, that's the, um, that's the viewport jumping there. That wasn't me or your video. That was actually 3DS Max. There we go. So maybe I want to move all of these. So we've kind of got the teacher here. And I want all these teapots to be sitting around having a story. I realise that's a very strange imagination I've got there, but there you go. So, obviously I've got these handles here where I would move in X and Z. And I've also got the handle here for moving in Y and Z at the same time. Without moving in, in the third option. Now that kind of sitting around having a story idea and notion is one that we're going to carry on through here. And what we're going to do is we're going to say, well, these teapots should really be looking at the teacher, be looking at the grown-up teapot when the grown-up teapot is telling the story. So what I need to do is I need to rotate them. So I'll come up here to my 
select and rotate tool and you'll see that we've got a new gizmo appear and this has got several different options on it that we need to be aware of I can highlight my Z rotation here and I can rotate that round and as I do so you can see just above the gizmo there's, um, there's a little option in there that had uh, the degrees and angles that it was moving in so I'll just left click that one and I'll make sure that they all face the teacher here there we go but I've also got other options in here so I could also rotate just around my Y and if I undo that or just around my Z and undo that if I left click in the pie, what I call a pie slice here I can rotate all three axes at the same time relative to uh, in that case view but if I can make that world so relative to world and then I've got this circle on the outside and this is one that you've got to be really careful of because this is the, this is the screen rotation so if I left click now I'm rotating this based upon my viewport to the screen or my, my attitude or my rotation my I, I don't know my vector whatever you want to call it but it's my position and how I'm viewing that object now you'll notice that if I move around this C although the um, although the gizmo stays the same so this this position this X and Y stays the same the handle seems to follow us around and that's what I was just saying is you've got to be a little bit careful because it's what I call random rotation it's never quite where you think it's going to be there we go so I'll just undo those until I get back to normal my select and scale will give me a few teapots some of which are bigger and some of which are littler than others and that scale handle is very similar to the move handle in that I've got sort of three sort of sticky out bits here and I can highlight each one and I can give that a good old stretch in any direction that I want incidentally these are all animatable so I could have a different type of teapot there there you go you see and if I wanted to make that smaller, I could just grab right in the center there and pull down. If I want to scale in just two axes at any one time, I'll just mouse over those two axes and I can then scale. You can see they're very strange results just in two axes at any one time. So the move, rotate and scale tools are all very, very simple. We're going to talk a little bit about... Um, how we get into those and, and use them a little bit more in detail because there are other options that we can use uh, moving forward but I think just for the moment if we just concentrate on that's how we move rotate and scale objects post their creation that's probably about enough for us at the moment